So Gotti goes to all these trials. He's got this killer legal team, gets named the Teflon Don. Do you think that just fed his ego and made his guard slip? And he spoke more to give more evidence up. No, because he beats these cases because Sammy takes the reins and tells us all how to get to these, these juries. We're all in on it. Sammy's the one running the show, but we're all part of it. And he's getting, so John knows he's going to sit there. He's got his chest out because he ain't going to jail because Sammy took care of it. So everything Sammy saved his life, how many times? Sammy has the power. Sammy has the guy. Sammy's making the money. So you're fucking jealous of Sammy and you're trying to fucking hammer Sammy. And listen, they can, the rest of the mob, when Sammy testifies, they can blame Sammy all they want. Here's what I'm going to say. The same thing I said to these guys when I was in prison. Well, you guys are gangsters. This is the Gambino family. Why didn't you fucking kill Gotti Sr.? And Sammy wouldn't have to talk. He had cuffs on him. He's in Manhattan jail. Never had a chance to get free because of Gotti just hammered him on a fucking thousand tapes. Kill Gotti. In jail, kill him. And it's the same thing with Junior Gotti. I'm sitting in the penitentiary. Why the fuck are you killing him? Aren't we the Gambino family? Isn't that what we do for a living? So when it's time to kill these guys, why aren't you killing them? Because they got that name? What the fuck does that mean to me? So... That's the realistic part of the, of the mob. And the realistic part of Sammy, he's got to be frustrated as shit. And then all these guys, whoever he later on implicated or whatever, it's their own fault because when Sammy was on the street and was taking care of business, why didn't you just take care of it for him? And you left him desolate. You know, it's not like you had a chance to go kill him. And you know how many guys are in prison? You give a guy who's never getting out, you guys know. Hey, give him a million. Hey, the family can't be if he gives you a million dollars to your family. Hey, you're near the guardian in jail. Hey, stick him up. Stab him up, kill him. Why didn't you just do it? When you want to be the mob or you want to be fucking Girl Scouts? I, don't, I mean, you know, you have a choice. I mean, these days it's different. I understand that because of technology. It's not the same. There's cameras everywhere. There's cell phones everywhere. It's a little more difficult. But in those days, not at all. It was easy. We're not offering a million, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's not worth a million. <laughs> I give you 10 I'll Give now. you the 10 on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> $50 bag of heroin in yeah. Arizona prison, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Take you out. What made Sammy the ball such a good underboss? Because of what you guys said. He didn't have an ego. He was humble. He was, you know, he was quiet. He didn't run around yelling and, you know, he did the work. If he didn't do the work directly, he made sure somebody else did the work. And he was a big fucking earner. And he had a great crew of guys around him. So he had the whole package. And, you know, he got a real bad fucking, you know, and it, he spent a lot of time later on in jail. And I think a lot of that is, you know, because of what happened in his past and he got hammered. Uh, but he conducted himself different. I said it from when I was a kid, when I first met him, John tried to intimidate me, which he did intimidate me. I was a kid. I won't say he didn't intimidate me as a kid. As an older guy, I was a little smarter. And I looked at him different and I looked at him like most guys looked at him. You probably want him dead. But Sam, he didn't try that with you. He looked at you, he said, hello. He didn't try to scare you off. He didn't try to intimidate you. He was secure with himself. So it was a, it was a different human being. And, uh, you know, you get guys in those positions. Like Vic Muso was in the neighborhood, and he was that type of guy too. He was okay. He wasn't one of those guys trying to intimidate anybody. He went about his business because he was secure in his life, and he was a fucking killer. So he, he was no soft guy. Uh, so these guys were legitimate killers, gas pipe. Maybe because John wasn't one of these guys. There wasn't a killer like that, that he had that insecurity complex. I'm not sure because I didn't have those discussions with him, but who the hell knows? I'm not a psychiatrist. But uh, some of these guys, that's why I say when you, you, you talk about Sammy, people hear me talk about him. He, he got a bad shake. What was your first meeting with Sammy like? Uh, just a long goodbye in 80, something like 84 or something. Shit, I see. But you know, we're always at the clubs. We're always in the, you know, we're always at the Bergen or the Ravenite, or and you hear this nonsense. Well, there's no pictures of me in a Bergen. Or, you know, I hear all this dumb shit from people on the internet, and I'm like, because at the trials they played a video of me at the Ravenite, at the courthouse I'm picking up Gotti Senior in Brooklyn. At his house I'm coming out as fuck. How many pictures you want from me? I'm not fucking George Clooney doing a show. Exactly. I mean, yeah. you, you, you know, <laughs> the, the, so. And the nonsense, and you know, these these are people that don't know the life or the gaudy, you know, ass kisses or whatever. But if you understand the life, and and the guys in every crew understand this life, and it doesn't matter what family or you know whether it's New York mobs, the Chicago, Philadelphia, whatever, we understand one thing, right? We understand that you make an appointment to see the FBI, 
It's done. You're a rat. Finished. And I've said over and over again, and the son, try to open up the Bronx House of Detention. You know that, right? Get the paperwork, and he admits it. He was going to open a jail to put all those guys in jail and make money off us. <laughs> That's even worse of a rat. So, you know, and he admits it. So uh, I don't even know what these conversations are about. I'm in a penitentiary in 2005 trying to save my life with these guys. I says, and we're getting information one after another. These guys were all giving me up. You know, it's not, you know, if, if, uh, if I didn't want to go nowhere, I would have saved my millions, about 35, 36 million at the time, my houses, my nightclub, my parking company, and I wouldn't spend a day in jail. And I wouldn't ever have to leave my family. That wasn't my choice. My choice was to be loyal to Cosa Nostra, be loyal to my enemies, and be loyal to my, my friends. And in return, they all fucked me. Did you feel like very betrayed? Did yeah, I was betrayed, but you know what? I, I you know, Like I said, listen, I don't give a fuck. I got a new life. I moved on. I try to tell kids don't follow the same shit that I did, because look what this. You know, here's an example, here's an example, here's an example, and uh, move on with your life. I had a crazy life. You know, I, I, I moved around from country to country, getting chased all over the place by Interpol. I got guys trying to kill me at the same time. I'm trying to save my own life, trying to save money. All my good friends betrayed me. And uh, somehow the story got mixed a little bit here. But uh, this guy's a lawyer. It's very easy to see. Did this guy get caught with anything? I never got caught. Now you can go country to country freely. Yeah, I mean, some countries don't let me in, despite what you guys just joked about earlier. Uh, I can't get in Canada still. I'm trying to get in Canada. They won't let me in. There's a couple others, and I won't mention because I don't want them not to let me in anymore. I don't think so. <laughs> There's not a whole lot in Canada anyway, it's apart from Baker. And I got some bats. family and friends there, and, oh, you know, yeah. So I, I'd like to see them. I got a good friend of mine that does a TV show there. But, uh, he I used to go over the border from Canada, Niagara Falls, Buffalo, New York. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I went there, Buffalo, New York. I couldn't go on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So people are fascinated by the inner workings of the mafia. So say John wanted someone killed. How does that go down the line? If if I wanted somebody killed, John? If John Gotti wants oh, to have somebody killed John, as the it, boss, it, it how does it go down? It depends on who it involves. So if it, let's just say it involves... Uh, Somebody that Sammy could get near, he's going to go to Sammy first with it. You know, when we killed Louis de Bono, I'll give you an example, Sammy really didn't have that much information of what happened with Louis. You know, he didn't know that hit went to Gotti Jr. as a, as a, a first hit as a captain, and then John brought it to me. And then we had a t discussion, me and John, with Bobby Borriello, and, and from there, you know, he gets hit. So uh, that's one hit. It depends who has the access to a guy, and you try to keep it close knit. As, as much as you can, so it's not in 10 different people's hands. They killed one guy, I forget his name, offhand Jewish guy, it might have been Weiss. And I don't know how many guys got hit with that murder. I think that's what, that was that murder. They, like 10 got, different guys got conspiracy to get, mur to, get to, to murder. It's the most ridiculous thing because a lot, it's not like people think there's not that many guys out there doing these shootings. You know, everybody thinks everybody in the mob's a killer. It's not even close to accurate. What well, what's the preferred method to take someone out? It depends on the guy and the individual too. I mean, if it's me, uh, you get you're gonna hit him first. I, you know, I'd rather hit him to the body if he's moving, because it's gonna slow him down. Then you put a couple in his head. But if you have him like you have some guys, you just shoot him a couple times in the head because you know you always got to hit him with a headshot. Make sure you finish him. Uh, guys make that mistake and uh, they leave him live. And sometimes those guys that are live they're coming back and they're killing those same guys so you know it's uh it's when, when you're going to do your work you got to do it uh, precisely and you got to do it like a professional really and you know people say well it's cold well that's the truth of what we were doing so it is cold yeah i met a guy in prison and i wrote his life story and he was a banana associate went out to alaska and formed his own clique out there and he said that his preferred method was Right in here, so the skull, the skull, just shooting them, so mm -hmm. the skull doesn't circumvent the bullet. So when you say in the head, did you have a preferred part of the head to shoot them in? Yeah, if you're gonna shoot them, you shoot them two, three, four times. Then it doesn't matter where you shoot them in the head. If you're shooting them that many times, <laughs> he's not getting up. From close range, that yeah, is. Yeah, I had an idiot guy that was with me once, and he told me, I think he's alive still after, you know, a couple of days later. And I'm like, oh, you can't be this fucking dumb. But there are guys that it is dumb. Yeah, in Arizona, they had us do the concealed weapons permit classes. It was actually cops who taught us how to kill. 
Well, yeah, actually, I went and shoot, and that's who taught me how to shoot. You know, I used to go shooting range in Florida. Yeah. And there was an ex-cop that, that taught me how to shoot. So for home protection, of course, they taught us this. Um, shoot them in the chest and, and the head. Yeah. And then you got the heart always, and the yeah, brain. Yeah, yeah. It's, always a, it's always a body shot. So did it ever, other than the one that you described then, were the mess-ups during these hits that things just got really out of control? and You know, guys will talk about whether it's a, it's, whether it's a murder or whether it's a, a robbery. It's, it's not set up properly, meaning you're getting bad information. So say John asked me to kill somebody and I bring it to you because it's somebody, you got to give me the intel. So you tell me this guy's at this location and there's only two people there. Well, there's four. You tell me there's no alarms, there's an alarm. You tell me there's no dogs, there's two dogs, three dogs, five dogs. You tell me there's nobody else in there, there's no women or children, there's women or children. And this happens a lot because you're getting guys that are idiots. And, you know, a lot of these guys aren't good at what they do or they're scared and they don't really want part of it, but they got no choice. So it just depends on who you're bringing with you and you better know who you're bringing with you. If it's children, would you abandon it? Would you abandon it? 